Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be going over and showing you how to install the Kurt Trailer Hitch Receiver here on our 2018 Chrysler Pacifica. So adding a trailer hitch to your Pacifica, it's going to be a great idea because it's going to make your vehicle that much more versatile. Now we can obviously use a trailer hitch for towing, but if we wanted to hit the trails or just free up some space inside the vehicle for us and the family on those long road trips, we could easily attach either a hitch mounted bike rack or hitch mounted cargo carrier. So in regards to towing, our trailer hitch is going to provide us with a 4,000 pound gross trailer weight rating. That's the amount we can pull outward on the receiver tube. It also has a 400 pound tongue weight rating, which is a downward force on the receiver tube. Now keep in mind, these capacities are for the hitch only, which is actually tested separately of the vehicle. Therefore, you do need to verify your vehicle's towing capacity in the owner's manual if applicable, and then abide by the lower of the two rated components, whether that's the hitch or the vehicle. So our trailer hitch does have a two inch by two inch receiver tube opening. Now this is the larger of the two standard sizes for this vehicle. And I prefer the two inch by two inch, even if you only have a one and a quarter inch bike rack, because there's actually more of those two inch accessories to choose from. There's definitely a lot more hitches, cargo carriers, and ball mounts to choose from with that larger opening. And then on the side of the receiver tube, we're gonna have our five eighths inch diameter hitch pin hole. Keep in mind your hitch pin and clip doesn't actually come with the trailer hitch. And the reason for that is a lot of your accessories are actually gonna come with their own ones. So shouldn't have to worry about buying that separately. And then welded to the bottom of the receiver tube and our cross tube, we have our safety chain loops. As you can see, those work great with both the larger Cleva style as well as the smaller S-Type. So now we got a couple of measurements for you guys here. They're gonna help you when you're selecting your hitch mounted accessories. The first one is the distance from the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening. You're looking at right about 12 inches. So that'll be useful when you're selecting a ball mount. That way you can make sure you get the correct rise and drop to tow your trailer level. And then I like to give the ground clearance on these minivans because they do kind of sit sort of low. You're looking at about nine and three quarter inches. So it does kind of hang down there, but I really don't think that's going to be too many issues for you guys, even on steep driveways, because it is tucked right up underneath the bumper. And then finally, the distance from the center of the hitch pin hole to the outside edge of the bumper. That's gonna be right at four and a half inches and that'll be useful when you're selecting your folding accessories. That way you can make sure that while they're in the stowed position, they don't contact the vehicle. So in regards to installation, I wouldn't say this is the easiest hitch to install, but it's not necessarily hard either. It's sort of, sort of the middle ground, if you will. There's not really any major modifying to the vehicle. It just takes some time to remove that large underbody panel. But once you get that off, everything's pretty much straightforward from there. You don't need any specialized tools or anything. You will need a torque wrench. If you don't have that, you can actually rent that for free from most local auto parts stores. Now, depending on your experience level, I would give yourselves around two to three hours, but we'll go ahead and walk you through this entire installation process step-by-step step now, so we can give you the confidence to do it at home by yourself. So to start your installation today, you're gonna come underneath the vehicle here, and we have this large fabric panel that we need to remove. Now there's several fasteners holding this on. The first fasteners are gonna be screws, which we'll grab an eight millimeter socket for. There's gonna be several of them along the outside edge. Make sure you don't remove all those. We only want those smaller screws that are black. So we have a couple on the outside edge here, and then there's a few more over there. So we'll go ahead and just take those all out now. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a 10 millimeter socket and we have several plastic nuts holding on the bottom of the panel there. You can see we have a couple over here as well as a couple over here and then two more on the outside. So we'll go ahead and take a 10 millimeter socket. We'll begin removing each of these. So next we're gonna have two bolts here on the bottom. We'll use our, 10, our same 10 millimeter socket from before. And once we remove these, there's two more of those plastic nuts above that. So you just pull down that panel and we'll remove those as well. So now the next part, we have three additional fasteners up here. Unfortunately, they're really hard to see, but we're gonna use an eight millimeter socket. There's gonna be two on the bottom edge of this panel and one at the top there. So just sort of feel for them. Uh, you're probably going to need a quarter inch drive socket and a small ratchet to get those out or if you have a handy swivel tool like us you can use an impact but they're these little screws here 
same ones that were removed from the outside of the panel earlier. And again, there's going to be three of them sort of tucked back up in here. So now finally two fasteners left. These ones actually kind of stay in the fabric here and we just take a Phillips head or a flat head rather and we just turn those and pull it down. We actually have two of these and once we get both of these out, our panel should come out, although it is highly possible that we missed a couple. So there we go, there's that one. And then one more back here. We'll go ahead and try to pull down here. I believe we got them all. There we go, perfect. Now we'll just go ahead and set this aside. So the next thing we need to do is we need to look at our instructions and we need to orient this panel correctly based on the instructions and then mark your little cutout section here. So we need to cut this out because we need to have clearance for our hitch. So basically what you're doing is you're gonna find this hole here, you're gonna measure over six inches and then you're gonna come out a quarter inch on either side of that and then down 10 inches till you get the area that we need to remove. Once I have that marked out, I'm just gonna take some tin snips here. Uh, if you have some heavy duty shears, that'll work as well. We'll just go ahead and begin removing that material. So there we go. That's what our cutout is gonna look like. We can go ahead and just throw this scrap away. So next we need to lower exhaust, but before we do that, we need to support it properly. If you're working on the ground, just grab a couple blocks of wood or some jack stands, or if you're in the air like us, you can just grab a cam buckle strap or a ratchet strap, whatever you have. Just hook onto two points on the frame and then pull it tight. And then we're gonna take some sort of penetrating oil. We're gonna be spraying down our two rubber isolators. There's gonna be one located here, sort of in the center. And then there's gonna be one located behind the bumper next to the tailpipe. Next, we'll take either a pry tool or an exhaust hanger removal tool to remove the metal hangers from the rubber isolators. We will show you both methods because chances are you're not gonna have this specialized tool. There's that one, now we have one more. There we go. Next, we'll be removing the heat shield. The heat shield is located here. It's held into place with two nuts, these plastic nuts, same as the ones we removed earlier, which we'll remove with a 10 millimeter socket. So we're gonna switch over to a universal joint, a swivel joint. That way I can get a little bit better hold on that nut. There we go. And now our heat shield should just drop right out. So now, once we have our heat shield off the vehicle, I'm gonna go ahead and set it on a table here because we do need to trim it. You can see we already have a line marked out here. We're gonna be removing this section. Now the instructions were a little confusing, at least in my opinion, because they had you measure a certain amount and then the instructions actually showed in the diagram a much larger amount. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mark it out how they have shown in the photo and begin removing that material using some shears here. So you want to be careful when you're cutting this stuff because it is very sharp so you can't injure yourself. Just be careful when you're making your cuts there. So now that we have our material removed we can just go ahead and throw this part away. This side we will be reinstalling. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to fish wire some of our hardware into the frame. So whenever you're working with fish wire I recommend using safety glasses. But you're going to take one of these, we're going to take the coiled end here, and we're going to stick it through the hole closest to the bumper beam here underneath the vehicle. So this is the hole that our hitch is going to use, this one here, the circular hole. We're going to feed our coiled end of our fish wire through that, and then we're going to feed it out this center square hole here in the bottom of the frame rail. So I use one finger to stick it up in the hole there, that way I can kind of feel onto the coiled end, grab it, and pull it down through. 
it is kind of tricky. Sometimes you can actually even bend the fish wire a little bit to help you. There we go. Now once I have the cold in through, I'm going to place on a spacer block and then I'm going to thread on a carriage bolt. I'm going to grab the other end of the pole wire. I'm going to feed my spacer block into the frame and then follow that up with my carriage bolt. Then we'll just simply pull that down through the hole there. And then I like to bend my fish wire as well. So now we're going to take another fish wire. We're going to do that same thing, but we're going to be using the square hole directly behind that circular hole that we just used. And then for our last hole over on the passenger side, it's that square access hole we've been using. We're going to reverse fish wire into that hole. So take your fish wire outside the vehicle, place on a spacer block, and then thread on our carriage bolt. And then we'll just simply stick the head of the carriage bolt up through that hole, follow that up with our spacer block, and just pull them both straight down like so. So now we're going to be doing that same thing over here on the driver's side, except we're only going to be using this hole right here, the circular hole, and then the square hole back here. On the driver's side frame rail, we have a nut secured to a stud on the bottom there, just directly beside our carriage bolt. We need to remove that nut, just like that. Now you may or may not have a factory ground there, and if you do, you'll need to secure it to this hole here in the bottom of this flange using the provided hardware. That's the hole we'll be reusing to secure our ground, assuming there's one on the bottom of the frame. But if not, you can just skip that step. Now with an extra set of hands, we can raise our hitch up into position. You do have to come up and over the exhaust on the passenger side first. So there is two holes here on the back of the flange on your hitch on the driver's side. This is a non-hybrid model, so we're going to be using the one closest to the edge here. So what I like to do is, I like to have one finger up there pressing on the side of our bolt there. That way when I'm trying to thread on my nut there, I'm not pushing the hardware back up into the frame. So there's two on the driver's side, whereas the passenger side we have three. So next we're going to come back with a three quarter inch socket. We're going to go ahead and snug down all of our hardware just to save us some elbow grease when we're torquing them at the end. So now we'll come back with our torque wrench here so we can torque all of our fasteners down to the specifications listed in your instructions. So now that we have our hitch on and everything's torqued down, all that's left to do now is just reinstall everything that we removed previously. So once we have everything reinstalled back on the vehicle, that's going to do it today for our look and installation of the Kurt trailer hitch receiver here on our 2018 Chrysler Pacifica.